Let's start off with questions from uh, Alif Kareem from WDVM. <clears throat> Coach, hope you're doing well. Um, obviously, there have been ups and downs with cancellations recently for the program. How tough has it been for you to kind of adjust with, you know, training with the guys and in practice? Well, you just take it one day at a time. You do the best you can. Um, we were disappointed the game got canceled Saturday. We were, you know, packed and getting ready to get on the bus and, you know, just to get away and, and travel. It might have been good for everybody's mojo, but it didn't happen. So you adjust your schedule to the, the last game. And um, we've had a little bit more practice time uh, because of it. Uh, we would have had a little bit less. Um, so you got you to think of that as a positive and, um, you know, just kind of go from there. But it's it's one day at a time. It really is. And, and you just don't, don't know what's going to pop uh, from day to day. But uh, uh, you just do the best you can. Practice hard. Guys have practiced well. Kids are resilient. And you just keep trying to get better. Up next, Lila Bromberg, Testudo Times. Hey, Coach. How are you? Good, Lila. How are you doing? Good. Um, so, you know, even with their record um, last year, Clemson was able to get, you know, upsets over, um, you know, top teams in Duke, Louisville, and Florida State. Just kind of from what you've seen, like how tough um, of a competitor is the team and what's kind of what you have stressed with the guys going into that? Yeah, and don't forget they broke the streak at North Carolina too. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, which they'd never won. So I'm a big fan of uh, Coach Brunel. I've known him for a long time. I think he's a terrific coach. Um, defensively, they're really, really strong. Uh, offensively, they're much further along probably than some of his teams might be at this time of year. They're, they're putting up some points and shooting the ball well. They got a really good mix of players. Uh, remind me a lot of us. They might even have a little more depth than we have. Um, they've had a lot of points coming off the bench. A lot of good players coming off the bench and their starters are veterans, veteran guys that have been there and played well for them. So they, they got a, they got a nice team. Um, Preseason predictions and all that, as you guys know, really don't mean that much. Um, and, and uh, I imagine he thinks they're a lot better than their prediction. And, and we kind of feel the same way about our team. So um, it'll be, a, be a good matchup. They're going to test us uh, first road game. Uh, even though the building won't be sold out, they, they do get a few hundred fans or a couple thousand, I think. So just the whole environment will be a little bit different uh, than what we've been used to. So hopefully we'll handle that well with the veteran guys and the young guys will step up and play well also. Daniel Oyafusi, Baltimore Sun. Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask, I know, um, you know, as, as you've kind of gone through the first two weeks and you've kind of seen the landscape of how uh, COVID has affected, um, you know, various games. I mean, do you and your coaching staff kind of find yourselves, I know you have the mask and you're distancing during meetings, but do you find yourself like doing less meetings, more virtual stuff? Have you adjusted practice in any way just to kind of, just to make sure we're protecting players as much as possible and limiting exposure? Yeah, um, as far as coaches go, we're, we're meeting probably less. Um, you know, I don't have my mask on talking to you guys right now, but we wear, wear a mask in our office. Um, you know, obviously walking in the hallways, walking down to practice. We wear them during practice. I sh um, you know, the only time I don't have my mask on this building uh, is when I'm working out um, and I still have it on. I just pull it down a little bit. But yeah, we're doing things a little bit. Uh, differently. Uh, we're still meeting with the team, but we're masking up. We're, you know, we're spread out six feet, uh, no longer than 15 minutes, our meetings. Um, you know, a lot of them are even you know, 10 minutes or less, but uh, yeah, we're trying to do things a little bit different that way. And, um, hope it helps, you know, uh, you just try to do everything you can to prevent the spread and, and catching it. And it's really what we do when we leave the building, uh, which what's important. And I think I think our guys have been making good choices. I know the coach, you know, as coach try to make good coach uh, decisions. And, you know, the thing you find about COVID when people get it, they're like, I don't know how we got, I don't know how I got it. So, you know, um, even if you can be really, really careful, sometimes it still might spread. And I think that's been pretty obvious. Um, and I just think it's, it's everywhere, um, you know, all over the country. And it, I don't follow it like I was following it six weeks ago, but I know that there was, Tremendous amount of cases out there. Uh, so you just got to do everything you can to be careful. 
Up next, Emily G. and Bavo, Washington Post. Hi. Um, first, just quickly, how's Aaron? Was he back to being able to, to practice with the elbow issue? Yeah, so um, Wiggs, oh, what is today? Tuesday. Um, Wiggs had a workout on Sunday. We had a, uh, a light workout. He did extra. And yesterday he did a full practice uh, with us. Uh, is he 100%? No. Uh, his elbow still bothers him a little bit. Uh, we're going to continue to wear the pad uh, there. Uh, he was a little better yesterday as far as continuity, moving around, looked like, looked like Aaron Wiggins, um, which is good because he had a lot of days off. So um, he, had, he had a good practice uh, yesterday, and um, you know, hopefully by tomorrow night he'll be back in rhythm and ready to go. And then I was just going to ask, um, it's kind of overarching, but Eric and, and just kind of how he's developed um, through three years here has been pretty impressive and, and just being able to score in a lot of different ways. Um, how, how have you seen him grow and like, were, were you expecting um, that level of growth from him when you when you got him here? Well, when he got when he first got here, he was better than I expected. He actually shot the ball a lot better than I expected him to. Uh, I think he shot almost 44 percent from three his freshman year. Um, and he's con consistently been a good shooter. Didn't shoot as well last year, but made some big shots late in the season for us. Um, just consistency with, with him. You know, he got a little bored in the last game and kind of show. I know he ended up with 12 points, but he didn't shoot the ball well. Didn't take a couple of shots I didn't like. And it's just his mind is not really being locked in. He's played such in such big games against so many good teams. Um, kind of lost his concentration. So I think it's just more just – consistently never letting up, being a leader, uh, doing what he has to do uh, for us to continue to get better. Up next, Scott Abraham, ABC. <clears throat> Coach, good to see you as always. Uh, you guys are playing really well. I mean, it's only three games in, but you've beaten every opponent by at least 18 points. Defensively, you're, you're, you're pretty strong. What surprised you so far about <clears throat> your team in the early going here? Uh, maybe just the scores uh, that we've won by. Um, because we've beaten, I think, some pretty good teams um, that, um, you know, I, I thought the games would be a little bit closer. So I think the scores is really what surprises me. We practice hard. We like each other. We compete. We compete like crazy in practice. Um, so I, I kind of felt like we were going to play well. Um, but the scores have really kind of, I, I thought they would be a lot closer games th than they were. And that's just a credit to our guys. They just they they just continue to fight and scratch and try to get better. So um, now, obviously, our competition gets better tomorrow night and uh, Big Ten coming, you know, next week. So, um, but I, I do think we've gained a lot of confidence and um, a lot of positive energy, you know, around our group right now. And your first road game tomorrow at Clemson. What are the challenges? for you guys in terms of going on the road in this COVID-19 environment? Yeah, if you traveled with us, you'd like it. You know, we usually go out for a nice steak dinner the night before. Um, I treat my guys well. Um, those days are gone. You know, we'll, we'll fly in later tonight. We'll get to the hotel. We'll have a little snack for them. We'll go straight to bed. Um, everything will be at the hotel, obviously. Uh, so it'll be different. You know, our guys are used to going out and and having a really nice meal because um, they earn it, they deserve it. And uh, it's something that Coach Brown used to do when I played at Kansas. So it's something I do for my teams, but that'll be a little bit different. Um, you know, we'll see. It's just, everything's different. So we'll, we'll see when we get started tomorrow. There will be a few people in the, in the stands uh, tomorrow night. So that'll, that'll be unique to what we've been through the first three games, but um, um you know, I hope our guys, we got some veteran guys that have been through it. Even, you know, Galen, who's played a tremendous amount of games in Alabama and Jerry's Hamilton at Boston College. They've been through it. You know, Jerry's has been to Clemson and played. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll give us a advantage in our first road game that we'll play well because we got some veteran guys. All right, last, qu last question, David Suggs from the Diamondback. Um, hey, Coach. Uh, I was wondering, like, you guys have six players averaging at least nine points per game. Um, in years past, it's been, like, I feel like maybe a couple players have kind of, you know, taken the brunt of the scoring. As a coaching staff, how have you guys kind of 
work to, I guess, spread that scoring out and I guess get touches for everybody on the ball so early in the season? Well, I just think we have more better players. Um, you know, guys have grown into roles and Daryl just didn't have a very good game or he'd be double figures. I think we'd have six double figures, which is pretty extraordinary. Um, we're scoring a lot of points right now too. That'll come down in league play. Um, but uh, we have a lot of really good players and there's guys, there's guys that aren't, you know, close to the 9.8 that could, or 10 point, whatever, um, that can score for us. So I just think we have more better players. I think we have seven starters on our roster this year. And um, then we have some guys that are developing in, into being good players for us. So I think it's just our rosters a little bit deeper. All right, coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Thank